When the STEM Mobile Learning Lab rolls up to their school, students in Southern Virginia get excited. When I first saw the STEM Lab, it looked awesome. And when I went in, it was really cool. It was better than awesome. In just its first eight months, the lab from the Institute for Advanced Learning and Research has educated nearly 4,000 students visiting more than 60 schools. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Director Nancy Combs explains how the STEM Mobile Lab opens new windows of learning for students. One of the interesting components to the STEM Mobile Lab initiative is the dually truck that hauls the Mobile Lab. Not only is it fueled by diesel, but also recaptured vegetable oil from a local school system. The truck stores the filtered oil in twin 40-gallon tanks. It helps to save the environment and has already saved nearly $2,000 in fuel cost in just three months. For the students, seeing is believing, but smelling is believing too. Funky but fuel efficient. And these students are quick to sniff out a lesson in managing their money and saving the environment. You can save a lot of money with that kind of money, stuff. After all, with the price of gas these days. Home weatherization is an important green technology topic. And this house of pressure is the visual tool that's utilized for both student and teacher education on how to reduce their energy bills. My favorite thing about the lab was the pressure house. It has a working ventilation system, a water heater, and dryer fan, as well as a fireplace. It may look like an oversized dollhouse, but Barbie and Ken never knew half as much as these students have already learned about the cost of improper insulation. You're going to have all of your heat going out in the wintertime, and in the summertime when you're trying to stay, stay cool, Where's all your cool air going to go? Bye-bye. Mm. Bye. And where's all your money going? Bye-bye. Because do we have enough money to cool and heat the whole entire earth no. from our house? Right, and that's what we're doing when we're not, we're not properly insulated. Okay. The majority of children get the most educational benefit from experiential learning. So the STEM lab is all about hands-on, mind-on. All right, good job. As part of its equipment, the STEM lab carries with it full-size windows and a door to further illustrate the importance of saving money and energy. Today I learned how to weatherize my doors and my windows. You can save money. You can save energy. We got to put caulk on doors and windows so that the wind won't come through the door and the dollar bills won't fly out your window. Not only do students learn about saving energy, but they also learn about alternative energy resources, one being the sun. Here we have a solar panel that's utilized as an educational tool. Students then get a first-hand experience using solar power. The solar panel demonstration unit stores enough energy to power a television for three days. It's an alternative fuel that can create a bright future for people who are trained in solar technology. One type of green job is um, installing solar panels in places that you can store up electricity. Solar panels would help the school because all the classrooms are powered by the light and that would cost a lot of money for the school. So the solar panels would, wouldn't cost you any money because it's powered by the sun. And the students learn that the sun's energy is blocked whenever the sun's rays are blocked. So we're just part of it. See how slow it goes. It still works, but it just goes at a slower pace. So you want to make sure solar panels are kept from all the structures. When the sun's not out, you can use the energy that you already saved up to power everything. Despite what Kermit says on Sesame Street, it is easy to be green if you're a frog that's solar powered. The STEM lab has green toys that make learning fun. Yeah, well, we got to hold the grasshopper in our hands. It felt weird. I'm serious, it was vibrating in our hands. As long as he's under the light or he gets some uh, sunshine on him, he's able to operate. This wind turbine demonstrates another source of renewable energy. 
the light goes on for these students when you add a little wind power. The wind powered the uh, windmill to generate energy to power lights. The sun provides power, the wind provides power, and sometimes the students provide the power. This generator demonstrates the varying amount of energy required for two different types of light bulbs. My favorite part of the STEM lab was when we got to power the light bulbs. Are you working hard? Yeah? Okay, let's stop. Let's take a break. And now let's see how much effort you have to put here. Is it a lot easier to get that one going? Yeah. So and it takes less power to power the CFL light bulb than it does the incandescent light bulb. Now the light bulb that uses a lot of power, that was the hardest to turn. But the energy efficient bulb, man, that was easy. The STEM lab has a 40-inch LCD monitor and was custom designed with four main workspace counters, each one with adjustable height to accommodate children and adults. An HR Pro microscope shows how the tiniest bits of life can play a big part in learning about science. And this battery-powered device teaches students about robotics and remote controls. The STEM lab is equipped with a Blu-ray DVD player, wireless internet, and both PC and Mac laptops. In addition to education, the lab can serve as a communications and demonstration resource and a mobile technology classroom. It's been used in both wellness and credit awareness programs and as an internet link for visiting international grad students. But most of the time, the Institute for Advanced Learning and Research uses the STEM lab to get kids excited and involved. When it comes to learning about science, technology, engineering, and math, and alternative sources of power. Oh, I really enjoyed it. For more information on how the Institute for Advanced Learning and Research delivers STEM education for children K through 12, feel free to contact us or visit IALR.org.